So today I am going to explain in very simple terms to parents on what happens in our body when we are stressed. This is applicable to children as well as adults and how this is connected to the current discussion I am having with my followers on Instagram related to food and force feeding a child. First, we must understand the whole physiology of stress. In our body, you see, we have something called an autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system means it is an automatic system which gets on and off depending on what we experience in our environment. So, ANS or autonomic nervous system has two parts, sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system is the part of your nervous system that is called fight and flight mode. So, every time your body senses danger, your body will instantly go into the SNS activation or sympathetic nervous system activation or fight and flight mode. As soon as the danger goes away, your body will go into PNS which is parasympathetic nervous system activation or rest and digest mode. This is fairly automatic. We have been built with this system by nature. So every time that there is a real danger like you are being chased by wild animals or you are in forest fire or something, your body will go into SNS. Even if it is not a real danger, but if it is an imagined danger, so suppose in your mind you feel that there is a threat like exam fear or anxiety, somebody shouting at you, scolding at you or you are witnessing violence, even though it is an imaginary danger or a perceived danger, your body will still go into SNS or the fight and flight mode. Now, let us understand what happens when our body goes into a fight and flight mode. When our body goes into fight and flight mode, essentially our body is being prepared to fight the danger or to run away from it. In order to fight or run away, first thing that we need is energy. So in a SNS activation, there is a lot of glucose that is pumped into our blood. At the same time, we need a lot of energy in our hands and legs to either fight or to run away. So lot of blood circulation is directed towards your peripherals, which is your arms and legs and the muscles of your arms and legs tighten up. Now for all the blood to be pumped into your peripherals, your heart needs to work really hard. So obviously your heart is going to pump the blood harder which means that your heart rate is going to go up. And when your heart is pumping blood fast and furiously, that is when your lungs will also have to work hard to purify the blood. So obviously your breathing is going to become fast. At this time, your body does not need to prioritize digestion. So automatically, the blood circulation or blood flow is deprioritized in the digestive part and it is all sent to the peripherals. Your digestive juices are also not required. So the digestive juices secretion is deprioritized and instead the secretion of stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline are prioritized. So we must understand that whenever a child senses danger or a child feels afraid, is fearful, all of this happens in the child's body. The heart rate goes up, the breathing becomes short, the muscles tighten up and at the same time, at that time, the blood circulation is not prioritized in the digestive area but it is prioritized in the peripherals. The digestive juices are deprioritized, reproduction and other hormones are deprioritized and only priority is to have stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline so that the body is prepared to fight or run away. Now, when the danger is gone and when you are relaxed, now the PNS or the rest and digest act gets activated. This is when now your muscle tones will relax. There is no more cortisol secreted in your blood. Instead, now all the blood is directed towards your digestive area and abdominal area. This is when now the body is going to recover, recuperate, repair and also focus on the areas like digestion, reproduction, sleep etc. So in a PNS activation, your muscles are relaxed, your heart rate is slow, your breathing is slow, your, your circulation is all focused in the digestive area. And this is extremely automatic, it is not in our hands. Now the same physiology is also in a child. Now, whenever a child is scared, so if you are feeding the child, for example, and because a child is not eating, you are threatening, you are scolding the child, sometimes you are slapping and the child is crying and angry and scared and you are angry and upset, there is stress mode activation. And now that you know from the slide that when a child is stressed, the 
the hormones that are needed for digestion are deprioritized digestive juices are not secreted so the child is not going to be able to digest the food the way it should the digestion and absorption of the nutrition in that food does not happen the way it should when the child is in is in a state of stress so when you are feeding your child using fear and threats whatever you feed is not going to give the benefit that it should give versus if your child is eating even a simple food even is eating a carrot but the child is relaxed and happy then the body is going to be in a rest and digest mode which means the body is going to absorb a lot more nutrition from that one carrot than what the body will probably absorb even if you give the most nutritious food but if the child is stressed so this is the science behind uh, uh, my uh, point of view when i say that please do not threaten or put fear in your child during meal times this is the physiological reason why i am saying this that when you threaten and coerce your child and beat a child and scold and shout the child just to eat that food remember that the food may not give the kind of benefit to the child that you wanted to give the second reason why i say this also is psychological is whenever a child is experiencing fear and threat and guilt or anger every time that the child is eating food psychologically food is associated with these negative emotions food is associated with fear anger and stress so psychologically also the child is going to develop an unhealthy association towards food the third reason why i say you should not force feed your children is because we are all born with this uh, natural understanding of how we feel when we are hungry and how we feel when we are full so there are these two hormones that are very important one is ghrelin and one is leptin ghrelin is a hormone ghrelin which is released for when the child feels hungry so ghrelin makes a child feels hungry and leptin makes a child feel full and all of us most of us i would say have this understanding at birth now when we are force feeding the child when the child is not hungry we are essentially not allowing the child to connect to the body and connect to this understanding so this natural hormones that are secreted related to hunger and satiation or feeling full are completely messed up because we as parents decide that this you should eat this much you should eat at this time and this is the portion you should eat so we are killing that intelligence that most children are born with i am saying most children yes there are some children who have some issues at birth or they have some imbalance because of which they are not able to recognize hunger and uh, satiation and hence for such children we might need to you know help them to recognize their hunger and fullness but let me tell you these are very few exceptional children most children are born with this understanding and this is a third reason why i say do not force your children to eat and even if you want them to eat healthy food i'm not saying don't feed them healthy food i'm not saying leave them starving all i'm saying is do not feed them in a state of stress do not feed them when they are stressed because it is not going to give the benefit and do not force feed them let them eat as much as they are hungry and make sure some people ask me okay my kid only wants to eat junk food then who gets the junk food in the house the parents of course if you do not get junk food and if you are very clear that your child can only eat what is cooked in the house that is enough let the child decide whether he wants to eat or not let the child decide that i want to stay hungry today let the child go hungry there is nothing wrong that is going to happen with most children if they don't eat a meal but at least you can be firm that the child should eat what is given on the plate if as and when he is hungry sometimes it may happen child may not want to eat right now but after an hour the child will take the plate and eat so these are the different ways i have also shared a reel on what are the different creative ways non violent ways where you can help your child to develop a good appetite but my message in this video is please do not force feed your child and please do not feed by using threat and stress and fear because it is going to be very counterproductive and whatever you feed in that environment is not going to do the benefit that you as parents want your child to benefit from i hope this makes it very clear so this stress mode or this sns mode is also activated when a child is threatened or punished or made to feel afraid even during studies and i am going to in the next reel share about how this stress or chronic stress that the child goes through can affect the studies 
the focus and concentration and the behavior of the child. So this is something that I have simplified and I'm going to be sharing in the next reel so that more and more you parents out there understand what you can do right and what is a wrong that you should avoid in your parenting journey.